Hi. Take Reva here again. Uh, now we're continuing the video series on installing gigabit Ethernet in my house, and uh, as you see, I've purchased a little bit more stuff. <laughs> um, I was thinking about my switch setup, switches that I have available, and I was thinking, that, and then I ran into a problem that I, when I went to. Yeah, several locations, and I was like, oh, the switches I had, the ones that I displayed in the previous video, you can have a look at. Um, already very close to running out of free ports, so uh, I decided to, um, for those locations where it was a little bit on the limit, I wanted to buy better or stuff with, um, with um, more ports. And then the other thing is that when I was testing, if you want to look at my previous video, then I had some Netgear equipment and that seemed to be working uh, much better than the TP-Link switches. So I decided to invest in Netgear stuff. So um, here we have a um, 8 port 1 Netgeared gigabit switch and then uh, unmanaged and then we have a uh, 16 port 1 and then I also uh, invested in a you know, 4 man's level 3 <laughs> switch <laughs> so it's got some you know, it's got some basic functionality in terms of being able to manage it so you can create virtual networks and actually since I'm running two two separate sections of gigabit networking I was thinking I could actually put this where my switch is and I was thinking I want to move the um, the main switching of the network off the um, wireless router that I have so the router the wireless router will not be the central point for switching local traffic that's just going on the LAN so it will go through this one instead and um, I also invested in um, uh, an okay, Ethernet cable uh, measuring device. I mean, this basically does conductivity and then uh, can measure power of the uh, Ethernet um, features. But I haven't got power. I, I don't intend to put power over Ethernet through the local LAN I decided against. Um, due to mainly due to the fact that might be. A uh, I would like to know that all devices on the network will be. Power over Ethernet compatible, and I can't be guaranteed. Based on my experience, that would be the case. And um, I also invested in a new solution for going through um, doors and windows. So I've got these um, flat cables and the uh, associated uh, continuation adapters. We actually have a little bit of closer look at that. So anyway, the issue I was having is that these these cables that are very nice and very flat that I purchased to go through windows and on the side of windows on the side of doors. Um, this um, dampens the um, the Ethernet signal so badly that the the maximum with one of these with it hopping over one of these uh, you basically you get to 100 megabit, and if it goes through two, then you get to, it um, degrades them, the Ethernet so badly that you get 10 megabit or um, 100 megabit max. So not really a working solution when I want to have a gigabit Ethernet in the house. So I had to actually find an alternative solution to that, and that was to um, buy so-called flat Ethernet cables. Uh, they're not really meant to go through windows and doors, but um, they're a flat form factor. And then they have the RJ45 jacks on there. And then um, you need these adapters basically. You can put, um, you, know, you plug one cable in there, and then and you, could, you can um, continue another cable just by plugging that. So it's like a pass through. So then you can do this trick. So then you end up with that, which is equivalent to this. And then um, to encapsulate them together, like an in, encasing, in it's like designed in the 3D printed kind of a box structure. And, um, and you take this one and you plug it in there. 
cable comes in, in both ends. And I can actually show an example of where I'm using it right now. And it actually works fine. And, and, and this here, this flat cable actually supports gigabit networking. I've both connected it in and um, run benchmarks. And I can't see that this disturbs the, um, the Ethernet signal, that you can't get a gigabit. Um, or or, and, and the performance, I mean, uh, I, I got up to a, the benchmark I ran was like up to a gigabyte of traffic, so I, was, I, I think it actually worked. Yeah, so that's the that's that. And um, I was thinking of making um, separate unboxing videos of these. Um, so if you're interested, just keep following the channel and you can. Um, pick up on one of those and um so anyway here's the um that adapter cable installed goes through the door so um that's what the box actually looks like when it's installed so you can connect the um, network cable in and uh, there's a little bit of protection to the to the cable on the other end that's connected in so it won't accidentally be pulled out and then um, i put a piece of, bit of tape on it to um, help it go around the corner this is a a special door, so it's actually a, got a special edge on it to make it tighter because this uh, is a garage entry exit door. Um, yeah, so uh, and um, and um, the good news is that um, we have gigabit um, networking because the light went to green for that network segment, that, net that network cable. So. And then I also tested it on the PC downstream from that connection, and um, you know I get a decent. Uh, I wasn't maxing it out, but I got up to a half a gigabyte anyway of traffic. So it uh, it works. The the broadband connection works just as well as um, from uh, from on this side of the networks. So I think that um, yeah, I'm going to start deploying those. Uh, as was described in the previous video, that I have to actually replace all those. Um, through flat through connections with this other other flat solution, but I'm hoping that it will work fine. Ah, printer hard work, printing out the um, single boxes. I need eight of these. I actually found out printing them one by one was actually not that. It, it seems to take a little bit less time since I'm around anyway, so I can just change them restart or take the print away and process it and then start a new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right, getting there. Yeah, here's the whole pile of those through pass through cables that are already removed. Ah, it's really sad to have to go through this. I thought I'd finish the job and then oh it just kinda shows that one should <laughs> test more before one commits to installing stuff that one hasn't used before. But anyway, it's getting there. Yeah, I'm making some progress. Now, um, this here, going out through the window here and returning into the house, supports one gigabit into or one gigabit network. And the throughput is, is it's the same as if I would test from from this location up through the switch that's here. Um, so I get the same performance basically from the other. So that's good. I'm making so it seems like when one uses two of these pass throughs it doesn't seem to have any meaningful um, difference on the performance. No no sorry. I'm gonna start talking about guitars and teddy bears. Well, that's where um, we have the networking center <laughs> with the main router. So here we have our main router, and then this is the the managed switch that I purchased. So it's just hanging around there. I really would like to reorganize this, but I don't know when I'll have the budget for that or the time. Um, but anyway, I'm now using this to separate the um, network segments into two VLAN um, sections. And um, if you would like to see that in action, you can wa 
I'm going to, or a, there will be an unboxing video of this, and then also look at the configuration um, program for this, for that, for that device. Now well, I just thought I'd mention it in short, and then um, the, one of the main reasons I'm using the virtual uh, LAN concept is that I'm isolating this um, st uh, uh, network storage from the segment of the network that's more for household use. So this is the one that's more related to you know, the YouTube business side. So so this is now blocked, so you can't access this from the other virtual LAN segment. So well, that's good. So if they, if any of my kids get a virus on their computer which start, tries to attack other devices, then it can't it can't store stuff on that, and it can't access the um, computers used for the um, uh, YouTube stuff or the YouTube side of things. Yeah. Okay. Now we're building a double box. So on the um, left hand side we have um, a printed one which hasn't been post processed yet and on the right hand side we have one that's been post uh, processed and there's um, a pair on the way out on the, on the printer being printed so let's have to make um, how many do I have to make that's three batches to be able to replace the ones that I have going through the windows so oh, that's the first double cable, double throughput cable assembly. So I can start replacing the double throughputs that I have. Okay, that's a single bypass. The new concept. And um, one gigabit. No compromises. So it comes out of the YouTube Studio Garage. And then it ends up here, which um, is the, actually it goes in here. Uh, or actually, <laughs> technically speaking, the network <laughs> starts from here and then goes out to the garage. But anyway, that's a, du du a new dual adapter as shown previously, and it's running both in and out as one gigabit. And it then continues. And it's up over here, and another, another location. Oh, not too far. Another location. So it ends up in here, and then it enters this room, in, and then hits a switch, and then comes out again. And one gigabit. And then it continues, and comes here, and crashes. Because here we still have the old flat cable concept through but so then the network kind of and then I have one user after this or one room after this one and then that room is now the PC there is now indicating you can't figure out what speed to use switching between 10 and 100 like click click is can't establish a, a uh, it can't decide what network speed to use anymore <laughs> so anyway we we're just abandoned it so I moved over to wireless on that room until I get this one swapped out also yeah, so I'm making progress. So soon, um, uh, the my major part of the trunk network, network um, cabling will, is in place, and then there's some uh, the yeah networking to be done, or <laughs> like point networking in local locations to to um, hook up the equipment to the trunk network, and um, this dividing the network into two parts. Using virtual lands, that has been that has been shown to be very, very good. I really like that function. Beep and yeah, if you like this video, um, consider subscribing. Um, hit the bell icon to be notified, especially for the possible unboxings you might want to watch, and um, tell other people that are building their own home networks to um, follow the channel. And we'll see. Oh, oh, see you in the next one.